Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about Paul Rubin's Classical Artist paint sets. I'll swatch both the Pearlescent 36 dry pan set, which has a gum Arabic binder, as well as the 24 tube set of traditional colors that uses an animal based binder or gelatin like rabbit hide glue or fish glue. I'll then demonstrate how these look when used as if they were a modern watercolor on watercolor paper. To be clear, that is not this product's intended purpose. You may see these advertised as watercolor since they are technically water soluble and re-wet from dry, unlike waterproof acrylic or oil paints. But traditional Chinese paints are generally designed to be more opaque and are not really meant to be overworked or for transparent layering or glazing techniques. These colors were formulated to adhere and sit on the surface of rice or mulberry fiber papers differently than most transparent gum Arabic watercolors you might be used to. In this video, I want to focus on comparing these to Paul Rubin's watercolors so you can clearly see some differences. In the future, I do plan to also compare the non-pearlescent tubes to products that are more likely to be similar, such as the highest grade of Marie's Chinese painting colors, and explore their use on traditional surfaces, specifically made for sumi ink wash or Chinese brush painting. The pearlescent set of 36 extra large style pans may use gum arabic as the binder, but they are not made the same way as Paul Rubin's smaller half pan watercolors sold in the metal tins. Nearly all of the colors do match between Paul Rubin's pearlescent sets. The mica-based pigment powders are the same, but the paint performance is not. These are much more powdery and less densely packed, meaning you'll easily use up more paint quickly. I have found that similar pearlescent products like Boku Undo's Gonsai are also a little more powdery and seem to suck in a lot of water and somehow still remain dry. But the Boku Undo Gonsai provided much smoother streak-free coverage that easily mixed into wet washes. I had a major problem with about 10 of the colors in this Paul Rubin set being really gritty or coarse feeling prone to clumping and streaking when mixed with water. If you already own the smaller half pans, I would definitely not buy these. The big pans are nice for bigger brushes, but 34 of 36 of these classical colors match those found in the 48 half pan set. The two colors that can't be found in the 48 pan set include number 214, a shiny silver, and number 9305, a brighter gold. I really love this gold, but it's nearly identical to Calero or Fintex Arabic gold, which could be bought as an individual pan instead. The tube colors are labeled with a color name on front, 
which I've loosely translated from a Google app, so please do not rely on anything written on my color chart as anything other than a guess. On the back of the tubes, they are all marked as using animal binder containing 12 ml and being fully light fast, five of five stars. There are no pigment code numbers, so I would not trust the light fast rating without the ingredients being fully disclosed. I'll be performing a light fast test, and until then, I'm hesitant to use these in serious art for a long term wall display. These tubes do not re wet as easily from dry as gum Arabic watercolors. I do not recommend pouring them out for use as dry pans since they crack apart into tiny pieces. The animal glue binder has a really strong smell. It remained intense while painting, like something burning with school glue and rotten garbage. Not great for anyone sensitive to smells. Most paints that use an animal binder smell a little, but this was a much stronger smell than I've experienced in my other paints using hide glue like Gansai, Shinhan's Korean color, or even Old Holland watercolors. This binder seems unstable since several of my tubes seemed oddly pressurized and two were leaking from the seams. I also saw other reviews noting the same experience. I have had a few tubes with excess binder separation, and some of the pigment has started to harden within the tube. Stirring inside of the tubes with a toothpick or needle tool will likely be required each time you paint. I was a bit concerned about the leaking tubes while I was handling these, since there is the possibility of toxic ingredients in these paints. Pigment codes are not disclosed, yet color names imply the possible use of mercury or arsenic sulfide-based pigments like Chinese vermilion, cinnabar, or realgar, and chemically unstable colors like azurite and malachite. I cannot say that these genuine minerals are actually present, though, as none of the colors look genuine when compared to the real thing. The hue was similar, so the names could just be implying lookalikes duping classical pigments. The normal characteristics of the genuine pigments, such as granulation texture, seem to be lacking. There are some common or modern pigments used in this set, such as titanium white, yellow ochre, phthalo blue, and possibly a dioxazine violet. So if you're looking for a genuine mineral and plant dye set for a traditional experience, these may not be desirable. Some of these colors may be multi-pigment mixtures. And if genuine plants like Garcinia or minerals like Realgar were actually used, they should be labeled as fugitive since those colors are prone to fading. The paints appear to have a chalk-like additive providing a matte finish and some added opacity, making them perform a bit like a gouache hybrid. Despite their use of oxgall, a cow bile-based dispersing agent, I found these to lack flow on watercolor paper. Only a couple of the most transparent reds with the extra fine pigment particles had a high disperse rate in wet washes. These do not perform the same as Paul Rubin's half pan sets or other oxgall enhanced watercolors like those from Windsor & Newton or Schmincke. Despite claiming to disperse well into water, I found that both sets had colors prone to clumping and I needed to really work at it to smooth them out on the palette, especially if I wanted them to flow in a wet wash. If you still plan to use cellulose or cotton watercolor papers, I would instead consider trying a pro gouache like M. Graham or a watercolor gouache hybrid like Shinhan Pass or Mission White. Both classical artist paint sets have a lot of quirks and textural characteristics that seem negative. I cannot tell you if this is a good product in its intended field, but I can clarify that it's not a great product to be used in the same way as most modern gum Arabic based watercolors or gouache. I can also say that it did not seem like the quality was as high as other Paul Rubin's products I've tested in the past, nor was it as pleasant to use as other animal glue based paints like the Bokuondo's dark inky color Gansai pans or Shinhan Korean color tubes. I really struggled through parts of these paintings as the colors looked so opaque in the wash but then dried with an uneven semi-opaque streaky coverage in some spots. 
The dark brown on the bird seemed like it was going to have a normal, gently granulating texture in my swatch, but ended up having a strange hard edge texture instead. With a controlled hand, you can definitely use these paints to create lovely art on watercolor paper, but it's going to be a struggle compared to paints that were meant for this task. I hope you found this helpful, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the YouTube comments. If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent light fast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.